It's a murder scene. When a rhino is poached, it's not one life that's lost. Many lives that are lost. Many, many, many lives that are lost. When a guide picked it up, they called me immediately. And I had a look and you could definitely see something's not right. And all he was doing is just walking around in circles. I mean, those species is volatile. Been so close and he just kept on walking around in circles. I mean, that's not what black rhino does. So he immediately got all the vet, started him as soon as possible. They gave me a call and they had a specialist examine him and just said he's permanently blind and there's no chance of recovery. The choice is either we have to euthanize him or put him back on the felt. The last census said there were 275 animals of his subspecies in South Africa, and they're very scarce on this side. Surely we should try and make a difference. Rhino costs a lot to protect. The question's often asked, why do you have rhino? My answer is simple, spend an hour with Moon and tell me you won't do whatever you can to protect rhino. I've never been that close to a fully awake adult black rhino. I know he's blind, so it sounds crazy, but he sort of looked into my soul. And I just felt this bond straight away from day one. Every single weekend of his six months in the Boma, we were out there. And you could just see how he grew to love that. Come on, here. Come on boy, come. Brett designed his Boma to make sure that his new facility would mirror that of what he had become used to in Addo Elephant Park. Brett Barlow had started talking to me about him and Simon and I came out here and saw him on the platform from the first time. And literally Brett called him and he came. Come on, let's go, come. What Rhino come on, knows his name. That was just unbelievable to me. The kindness that Brett had shown this animal was immediate, it was obvious. We couldn't let him go forward without us helping him in whatever way we could. Looking after rhino requires a huge amount of land and a huge amount of resources. That's my biggest worry, no matter where he is, is just security. They're difficult to protect right now. So because of that, we've brought in armed security for Munu. France, this is Munu. I want Munu to start to smell you and that you're here to protect him. Okay. We are friends. I will protect him 100%. It's a big responsibility. Where next? What is going to be regarded as success in this project? The next part of the journey is finding him his girlfriend. His subspecies is Bicornis bicornis. So we have to find the same subspecies somewhere further away from South Africa. To ensure that the genetic diversity is best protected. Oh, we're going to get you a girlfriend. And we're aiming to do that with a mate that we have ideally located in Namibia. Who knows? They may bond, they may do this, they may follow each other. We're on uncharted territory here. But we have to try. When is a blind rhino, but he's got an incredible vision for the future. For us to not find an opportunity to breed him so that his progeny can play a critical role in repopulating areas that have been decimated by poaching, then that would be an opportunity lost. This is as good as it could go right now. These have become my two mantras now. Every rhino matters, and save one, save all. Everything else is failing. What it does is it buys us time. Can you imagine a world without rhino? I don't think that's a world we want to live in. More can go wrong with this project than can go right. By saving a rhino, we send a message to the world that says life is respected. These animals are crying out for help. And we're the only ones that can protect them from ourselves.